Greetings, people of Middle-earth. It is I, Sauron. But I've sort of dropped that name in favor of being called Kamal now for, well, personal reasons. And today I bring to you a gift. Today we have one hell of an integral. It is pretty damn gorgeous. I mean, we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log 2 sine square theta divided by log tangent theta d theta. And the solution development is pretty elegant and the result is quite satisfying. So to begin, we'll just make the substitution that is letting tangent theta equal u here, which implies that secant square theta d theta equals du, but this also implies that d theta is du divided by secant square theta, and secant square is just 1 plus tangent square theta, and tangent theta is just u, so we have 1 plus u square in the denominator. And as far as the limits are concerned, as theta approaches 0, we have u approaching 0. And as theta approaches pi by 2, we have u approaching infinity. Okay, cool. Now, what about the sine function here? Well, tangent theta equals sine theta divided by cosine theta. So this implies that sine square theta is just tangent square theta times cosine square theta. But wait, cosine square is just 1 over secant square, so we have tangent square theta divided by secant square theta, and secant square theta is just 1 plus tangent square theta. So we have tangent square theta divided by 1 plus tangent square theta. And this implies that sine square theta equals u squared divided by 1 plus u squared. Okay, cool. So all of that implies that... I might as well highlight this in a different color. So we have i here now equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of log 2 sine square, which is, of course, now the logarithm of 2 u squared divided by 1 plus u squared. And downstairs, we have this log u term. And the differential element is, of course, du divided by 1 plus u squared. Okay, cool. So our transformed integral looks far worse than the integral we started off with. Which means we're on the right track. So let's make another transformation here. I have a log u term in the denominator. So maybe it would be fruitful if we perform the substitution that is letting u here equal to e to the x. I haven't introduced the x variable so far in the video, which is interesting. Rather, why not let u squared equal to e to the x? This implies that 2u du equals e to the x dx, and this further implies that du is just e to the x dx divided by 2 times u. Now, if u squared is e to the x, then u would be e to the x by 2. So we do have some simplification, meaning that we have du equal to e to the x by 2 dx. And what about the limits of integration? Well, as u approaches 0, that means e to the x would approach 0. So that means x needs to, needs to approach negative infinity. And as u approaches infinity, of course, x also approaches infinity. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i is now the integral from negative to positive infinity of what exactly do we have? Well, we have log 2 times u squared is e to the x, and we're dividing this thing by 1 plus e to the x. In the denominator, we have log u. Now, if u here is e to the x by 2, so that means log u would just be x by 2. And the differential element has this factor of 1 half with it as well, so I'm just going to cancel that straight away. We have e to the x by 2 dx over here. And we also have this 1 plus u squared term in the denominator, meaning that we have 1 plus e to the x. Okay, this looks slightly better, I guess. And now let's try translating all of the e to the x terms into e to the x by 2 terms. That way, we have the integral from negative to positive infinity of log 2 times, let's see, we have 2e to the x upstairs. Wait, terribly sorry about that. 
And from the denominator, we can factor out e to the x by 2, leaving behind e to the negative x by 2 plus e to the x by 2. And from the denominator, we do exactly the same thing. So we have e to the x by 2 times e to the negative x by 2 plus e to the x by 2. And that cancels out the e to the x by 2 term up there in the numerator. And that looks quite nice so far. In fact, upstairs, in the argument of the logarithm, we have e to the x divided by e to the x by 2. So we have the integral from negative to positive infinity of log 2 times e to the x by 2 divided by e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2 divided by x times e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2 dx. And this actually looks quite nice. And I can rewrite the argument a little bit over here because I have, well, the integral from negative to positive infinity of the logarithm of e to the x by 2 times 2 divided by e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2, which we would recognize as the reciprocal of the hyperbolic cosine or the cosh of x by 2. So we have 1 by cosh x by 2 here, which is pretty cool indeed. Terribly sorry about that. And my handwriting is never going to get any better. So we have 1 by cosh x by 2, whatever. We're dividing the whole thing by e to the... Wait, we have x to the... x times e to the x by 2. Sorry, sometimes I forget how to talk. And this other term. Yeah, that's exactly it. And now we can make use of the properties of the logarithm to write the log of a product as the sum of logarithms. And we can make use of the linearity of the integration operator to now get the sum of two integrals. So we have the integral from negative to positive infinity of log e to the x by 2 divided by x times e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2 dx plus the integral from negative to positive infinity of log 1 by cosh x by 2 divided by e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2 times x dx. Now, the second integral looks like an absolute beast, so let's deal with it first. Let's see, we could use something like, I don't know, contour integration or something of the likes, or maybe a series expansion. Or we could take note of the fact that for log of 1 by cosh, well, that would be equal to negative log cosh x by 2, so you get the idea. So for this function, we have the logarithm of an even function, which is, of course, an even function of x. And for e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2, again, these two are even functions of x. x here is an odd function. So overall, the integrand is an odd function of x. And we're integrating this odd function over the symmetric interval from negative to positive infinity. So we just crash it down to zero, which is, of course, quite convenient. And this implies that the target integral i is now just one half the integral from negative to positive infinity of, let's see, we're only left with x, and we have x downstairs as well. We have e to the x by 2 plus e to the negative x by 2 dx. We have some wonderful cancellation taking place. And now we can write this as one half the integral from negative to positive infinity. And we can expand using e to the x by 2. By that token, we have e to the x upstairs, and we have, let's see, we got 1 plus e to the, no, wait, we have e to the x by 2. If we expand using e to the x by 2, then we have 1 plus e to the x downstairs. And e to the x is just, you know, e to the x by 2 squared. And of course, a simple substitution of letting e to the x by 2 equal z, which implies that one half of e to the x by 2 dx equals dz. And of course, as x tends to negative infinity, we have z tending to 0. So we have the integral now from 0 to infinity of dz divided by 1 plus z squared, which is, of course, the inverse tangent function. 
In the limit, as its argument tends to zero, uh, tends to infinity, we get pi by two, and for the zero limit, we get a big fat zero. And this is extremely cool because it implies that the integral from zero to pi by two of log two sine square theta, in fact, if I multiply the entire equation by two, I'd have a factor of two here, which turns into an exponent of two, and that means I have the logarithm of four times sine to the fourth power of theta divided by the logarithm, the logarithm of tangent theta d theta equal to pi, which is quite beautiful indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I hope you learned something from the video. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the effort I'm putting into my work, consider supporting my content on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.